Hello everybody, this is Tim. I'm back once again with my Chucky the Killer DVD collection here. You know, I just recently watched Pride of Chucky. It's got the uh, look of him on the front of the box here with the stitch look, which I prefer the non-stitch look, but I think the stitch look works good in this film. I guess most people like the stitch look better because, well, it's all over the box. <laughs> but anyway, to the film, Bride of Chucky, I really enjoyed this one. It has some really intelligent comedy in it and some stupid comedy. Uh, yes, this is a horror comedy, not a straight-up horror film. Like the first three with little bits of comedy like they had, this is a straight-up horror comedy. Horror comedy romance is what I would call it. And Chucky and Tiffany, his uh, bride in this one, are in the limelight. They are the stars. And the human characters, Jesse and Jade, are the secondary stars. I don't know who plays Jesse, the male lead. Uh, Catherine Heigl plays Jade, though, and I'm not a big fan of hers. She pretty much plays the same character over and over in her films nowadays. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, this is very much a Chucky movie, hence Bride of Chucky. Uh, Chucky and his bride are in the limelight in this movie. They are the stars. So you may like that, you may not. They change a couple of things in this one. Uh, they kind of rewrite Chucky's history a little bit. Uh, they add in an amulet that some, for some reason he needs now to uh, transfer his soul into people's bodies, which he never needed before. I guess they wanted to freshen it up, but I'm not a big fan of fucking up continuity like that. But anyway, uh, so after the third film, this movie takes a time, uh, a little bit of a time jump. I'm not sure how much. Uh, Chucky's uh, remains are in an evidence locker. And in the evidence locker, you get a lot of little cameos by with Jason's mask and uh, uh, Freddy's glove, uh, Leatherface's machete, uh, and Michael Myers' mask. It's pretty neat. I like that. That's uh, some good meta horror right there. This film has a lot of meta horror comedy in it and a lot of meta horror references. It's kind of like uh, Scream. I guess they're trying to capitalize on the success of that, which I don't really like that. Some of the meta horror references work in here, others don't. But, uh, it's okay. I guess they had to freshen it up to keep the franchise going. If it had been the same thing, it probably had been another box office bomb like Part 3. But as long as they don't overdo it, I'm fine with it. So basically, the Tiffany, who is uh, Chucky's ex-girlfriend from when he's alive, pays uh, this cop to take Chucky's remains from the evidence locker and deliver it to her. And so he, goes the, he takes the remains of Chucky in a little plastic bag. Uh, delivers them to Tiffany, but she slices his throat in a suspenseful kill. It's a good kill. The kills in this one are more elaborate uh, and better, definitely, than the kills in the third one. And I don't know about the second one, but it at least beats the third one. But anyway, back to the story. Um, so she gets his remains, and in kind of a neat little Frankenstein way, he stitches them back together. I guess Bride of Chucky, this movie, has a lot of homages to Frankenstein, or Bride of Frankenstein, which I like. You'd even They're even watching it in the movie, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So, but anyway... Um, so she stitches him back together and it plays Rob Zombie's Living Dead Girl like over the scene and I really like that. I enjoy Rob Zombie's music. It works well here. This song does. Uh, this movie has a kick-ass soundtrack. It's got a really rocking, romantic uh, soundtrack to it, which fits very well with the feel of this movie and the look of this movie. I really enjoy too. Uh, well, So basically she stitches the little fucker back together. Does a voodoo chant. And I like this. She's reading voodoo for dummies. Basically to bring him back to life. She throws the book away and says, what a crock. You know, like this shit don't work. I thought that was kind of funny too. But uh, Alexis Arcan of all people shows up dressed up like Marilyn Manson in a way. Um, I guess he well, he's trying to hit it. He, he's trying to get laid. Uh, unsuccessfully. She, uh, he, she gets him to handcuff. She handcuffs him basically to the bed. Sets Chucky on top of him. I guess he's... Want some awful bad because I would probably get the fuck out of there once that happened. But anyway, uh, <laughs> he makes a, re a joke about Chucky's dick. Chucky does a head spin, like 180 or 360, I mean. And uh, he rips out the fucking piercing he's got in his lip, like one connected to here and here, which I kind of enjoyed, and then smothers him with a pillow. So I like that death scene. But yeah, like I said, you get some, you, well, you get some stupid comedy in this too. Like after that, Chucky tries like, Fill a Jennifer Tilly's boobs or whatever, and I'm like, yeah. I mean, who, oh, everybody would like to do that, but still, <laughs> it comes off a little cheesy for me. So she takes him, and then you get another, uh, another hilarious fucking scene where she's talking about she's had the ring that he gave her, like she thought that they were going to get married, and he's like, what are you fucking nuts? And that's Brad, way Brad Dorf delivers that line. Yeah, Brad Dorf's great once again. Uh, the Chucky character though isn't scary anymore. He's in the 
complete limelight right here. This is basically like the Nightmare on Elm Street 4, Chucky. He's directly in the limelight here. So, uh, she gets pissed off about that, uh, locks him up in this little playpen, which I liked. Uh, her next door neighbor is, uh, Jesse, who is the boyfriend of Katherine Heigl's character. Uh, he's trying to hook up with, uh, Katherine Heigl, but her uncle, played by John Ritter, who plays an asshole very well. I'm not used to him playing assholes, but he does a good job. Doesn't want him to hook up. So they basically come up with a plan to sneak off. Uh, Jesse has a friend named David who is gay, and I like that they play his character as an ordinary gay guy, not an over-the-top flamboyant one. That's a nice change. And uh, he basically is in favor of him sneaking off. He thinks it's a good idea. Uh, and then so uh, let, uh, back at Chucky and Tiffany's trailer, uh, Chucky manages to break loose. Tiffany's watching uh, Bride of Frankenstein of all films. He fucking lunges, uh, he tries to stab her first, she kicks his little ass away, and he, then he pushes a, the TV that she's watching down into the tub, and you get a pretty cool death scene with bubbles and shit flying up everywhere, and then he does uh, the chant again, and uh, puts her soul into a, uh, into a doll that she gave him just to fuck with him uh, earlier in the movie, and he says, what a crock, I thought it was a nice little homage, because he thinks it doesn't work either, but I'm not really sure why he puts her in the doll, I guess it's punishment or something. But I'm used to Chucky just killing people and being done with it, but whatever. So she comes to life as the doll. We get kind of a stupid line. I wouldn't marry you if you had the body of G.I. Joe. Uh, pretty fucking cheesy. I don't like that. But then you get this little montage where it's like, uh, Call Me or whatever. Uh, that song. Like I said, this movie has a great soundtrack. Where she's uh, making herself look more like her uh, human self. making her, Dressing her doll self up. And it's pretty cool. Uh, so she did, uh, they need to get to uh, Hackensack, New Jersey, where uh, Charles Lee Ray's corpse is buried, so they can get the amulet off his neck to transfer their souls into human bodies. Now this completely changes and, and adds new story elements from the first uh, that weren't in the first three, and I guess I'm okay with this. I don't like the fact that they changed continuity a little bit and say that he had this necklace on him when he was gunned down in the first movie, but it's clearly not there. But I guess it's called uh, re uh, recon reconning or something like that, recanon or whatever, where they change canon and change it to something else. But anyway, I guess it works in this film. So basically, they need to get there. She calls up the Jesse, offers him like ten thousand dollars, I believe, to deliver the dolls to Hackensack, New Jersey. He agrees so she can get the money, and him and his uh, him and Catherine Heigl can run off together. This movie has a very star-crossed lovers feel, which I think fits it, and I enjoyed that too. So basically, they want to run off and hit the road. Um, John Ritter's character sees the van parked out front. He wants to set them up, so they get arrested again. He knows what's I mean, so they get arrested. He knows what's going on. He plants some weed in the van. I mean, in, not the truck, a van. He plants weed in the van. Uh, and then you get another really cool elaborate death scene where at first Chucky wants to stab him, but Tiffany uh, references Martha Stewart, and Chucky says, who the fuck is Martha Stewart? Oh, that's pretty fucking funny. But anyway, and they do like, they set these nails on, uh, uh, they set these nails in a certain spot, so when they, uh, she calls the airbag to shoot out, it'll make the nails fly, and they hit John Ritter in the face, and Chucky says, why does that look so familiar? It's a well. They set them on the glove box. I don't know why I blanked out on that word. But anyway, they hit the like the airbag and it flies out. Uh, I believe it's the glove box anyway. Yeah, and then the nails fly out and hit John Ritter all in the face. That was a pretty creative death scene. Chucky says, "Why does it look so familiar?" And it's obviously a reference to Hellraiser. I think that meta horror reference works too in here. Um, so basically, after that, they hide his body. Uh, then Jesse and Jade hit the road. Uh, this movie after this for the second act becomes like a cross country murder spree. Which I kind of liked. I mean, I liked much more of this story element than the story elements from the second and third one. I like the cross country murder trip idea. It's pretty cool. And a welcome change from the first, from the second and third one. And so they're on riding around. And uh, Fuckface, who's this, I'm going to call him Fuckface, this cop who works for, who worked for John Ritter, uh, just to fuck with him. <laughs> I mean, he just gets paid basically to fuck with him and calls sh shit for him. <laughs> So he pulls him over, uh, tries to arrest uh, Jesse. So here comes another elaborate kill, which I really like. Chucky takes uh, a lighter and uh, plants a rag in his gas tank, lights it on fire. That motherfucker explodes everywhere. 
and you see like car parts flying around everywhere and hitting almost hitting people and everything it's a great elaborate death and really raises the movie up in terms of at least death uh, death uh, killing style I mean fuck yeah killing style but yeah it's really a great death and so basically after that uh, their head keep heading the hack and sack they get married uh, John Ritter's character pops up again uh, Chucky stabs the fuck out of him this time and he says a true classic never goes out of style this movie even references the character of Chucky himself a little bit right there <laughs> which I like too I really like this movie I'll just go ahead and say it I think this is the second best sequel uh, the second best movie I mean in this franchise thus far out of the four it's a four star film I'll go ahead and tell you I give it four out of possible four it works for what it's trying to do and so John Ritter's dead uh, well again <laughs> They get back in the, the van. They uh, head to a hotel to spend their honeymoon. Um, then there's this couple, other couple, and they're like swingers or something, show up and steal the, the ring. And so Tiffany gets mad at that because she's like more for love and shit and stuff like that. Oh, and there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of funny jokes in this movie that work. Like when uh, Jesse and Jade are telling each other how much they love each other, and Chucky says, I give him six months, three if she gains weight. That's funny as fuck. I like that. But then you get stupid shit like you look over at Chucky, he's doing like a jack off reference. I'm like, eh. Again, you know, juvenile shit. But anyway, so Tiffany and Chucky go into the room where uh, the couple is who stole the ring, and Tiffany takes like a wine bottle and slings it up, hits this mirror that's above them, and the glass falls down, fucking like eradicates them. It's a pretty epic death. Like I said, this movie has a lot of great deaths. And then one, uh, one thing I like about the movie, but when I uh, saw it for the first time a long time ago, it kind of tripped me out because I wasn't expecting it. They really pushed the envelope and the two dolls actually fuck, which I thought was pretty interesting for a Chucky movie to go that far. But it, it works. I like that they don't just uh, pussyfoot around this idea of Bride of Chucky to actually go full power with it, which I like. And so after that, uh, they... They see the body. I believe they see the bodies. Or no, they don't. I don't think they see the bodies, but they just uh, a maid finds them and sc screams her fucking head off about it. And so they hear about it and they hightail it out of there. Then David shows up, the gay friend. <laughs> so then they're on the highway and then they stop. David discovers the body of John Ritter. He gets out of the back of the van, and then Chucky and Tiffany reveal themselves to be alive. And fucking David gets run over by a big Mack truck, a big semi, and it's an awesome death scene. Pretty epic. And he fucking just obliterates, which I enjoy. And so basically after that, Chucky and Tiffany take them hostage. Then they go from the van, and, well, Chucky shoots a cop car, which I thought was pretty fucking funny. And causes it to go off road. But anyway, after that, they still an RV, I believe. And um, we get some, uh, Chucky and Tiffany getting a fight. We get some uh, stupid ass comedy I don't really like, which talks about uh, plastic. Well, I actually I take that back. I kind of like this because it's a horror comedy, and uh, it works with their characters about how they would argue, I guess, in a in this scenario when she says plastic is no substitute in bed for a nice hunk of wood. I guess I kind of enjoyed that when Tiffany says that, and uh, he tell Chucky tells her that the dishes ain't gonna wash themselves, so they get into a fight and. Uh, Catherine Heigl knocks uh, Tiffany into the fucking oven, and uh, Jesse knocks Chucky out the window, and he goes flying, <laughs> and then the RV, uh, the RV crashes, or the motor, and the other motor home crashes, and um, he gets ready to explode, Tiffany jumps out of the stove, starts biting the fuck out of Catherine Heigl in the ear, Jesse saves her, uh, throws Tiffany out the door, uh, he cuts Catherine Heigl loose, she gets loose, and then you get another epic scene, this movie's got a lot, feels a lot more elaborate and explosions and shit uh ep elaborate scenes and put together scenarios and stuff than the other three even the first one even though the first one's a better movie uh and so before the rv explodes uh uh jesse leaps out and like kind of like an action movie style scene and it explodes but well, yeah, once again i like jesse and jay they're okay i prefer uh, andy from the first three they're not a they're not a very good Andy substitute, but they're okay. But like I said, Chucky and Tiffany are the stars of this film, and this is much more their film than it is any heroes. Um, so basically, they got uh, well. Chucky finds Catherine Heigl, takes her hostage. She takes him to the graveyard where he's buried. Uh, 
he's being uh, oh his corpse is being dug up by a, I guess a coroner or a grave digger or whatever because they want to examine his corpse because Chucky lost a lighter uh, when he uh, blew the uh, cop's car up with the cop in it obviously <laughs> he lost the lighter that he lit the rag with and it had his fingerprints on it where he's becoming more human so he left uh, behind his fingerprints on it so the police want to exhume his corpse and uh, he shoots the guy who's digging him up gets Catherine Heigl to get down in the grave to uh, open it up so that he can see himself and you get, you get a little funny reference where he says really didn't need to see that I like that where I do a good voice acting again no matter what style of Chuck he's doing um, then she gets the amulet off his corpse throws it to him uh, he wants to use it to switch bodies but then Jesse shows up holding Tiffany hostage they make a trade he lets Tiffany go. Tiffany comes over there to uh, Chucky. She says, catch me. He moves out of the way. Says, ugh, and she falls down. That's pretty fucking funny, too. Um, so basically, after that, uh, he gets ready to switch bodies. And I, it seemed like he did the chant, but it doesn't seem like it works. So I don't get that. I thought that was kind of stupid. Uh, but anyway, then Tiffany uh, betrays Chucky, uh, stabs the fuck out of him, uh, which was pretty interesting. And they uh, get into a little Duke out fight. Chucky stabs the fuck out of Tiffany and says, get off my knife, which I enjoyed. Uh, well, I guess she betrayed him because she's more for love. I guess she has kind of a softer, gentler side to her, uh, despite her killing. And, well, Chucky doesn't. He doesn't really give a fuck. And uh, so he stabs the fuck out of Tiffany. Um, I guess, well, I guess Tiffany didn't want to see the couple die because they were so in love or whatever. But anyway, so he stabs the fuck out of her. She's pretty much dead. Then Chucky gets the shit knocked out of him with a shovel into his own grave, which I enjoyed that. He sees his own corpse and freaks the fuck out. And then uh, the cop who's been investigating the crime shows up. Uh, Catherine Heigl grabs the cop's gun, shoots the fuck out of Chucky. I didn't like how Chucky died like a little bitch in this one. I enjoyed this movie more than any of the sequels thus far. But Chucky's death, I didn't like how it wasn't Terminator style like the second and third one. He just gets shot like a little bitch, falls over dead. I didn't enjoy that at all. So basically after that, uh, the detective who has seen the doll alive and moving around, running, <laughs> uh, tells whoever his superior is that uh, Jesse and Jay didn't do it, tells them to go home, get the fuck out of Dodge, they leave. And this movie has the greatest ending <laughs> of the sequels I've seen so far, where the cop goes over to Tiffany's body. You think Tiffany is dead. I mean, well, you think she's going to do a jump scare and jump up at him, but instead she starts moving. And uh, she has the fucking, well, seed of Chucky, and he comes out of her, and uh, it looks like Chucky, and then the little son bitch like, leaps towards the screen, and uh, uh, one final scare, and that was just epic. Have you seen this movie? When I saw this movie for the first time, I was not expecting that, so that was pretty, that was pretty epic. <laughs> but anyway, so to cap this movie off, like I said, it's a four-star film out of four. It's the best sequel of the sequels I've seen so far. I've really enjoyed it. It has some stupid-ass humor and some overly meta scream-style humor, which I don't enjoy. But uh, as far as it goes for Chucky, it's a new fresh take on the character. Uh, I liked a lot of the jokes he had, and Brad Dourif plays him great. Jennifer Tilly plays Tiffany great. Catherine Heigl, she's there. The guy that plays Jesse, he's there. The guy that plays uh, David, uh, he's just there, basically. I know they're just there. This is Chucky and Tiffany's movie. Uh, bottom line and they do it great and for that uh it's uh, a four star film and i like the uh, little chucky baby that jumps out at the end it's a good surprise for people who've never seen this movie which i've just spoiled so well eh, fuck it <laughs> but it's a good surprise and it works well but uh yeah this movie is four stars out of four i really enjoyed it and i already i remember enough about cedar chucky to know that's completely let down for anybody who enjoyed this movie and i know it's a piece of shit going right into it and i'm not looking forward to watching it so you guys are going to have to just wish me luck for that one. So until then, peace out everybody. And I'll see you when I get back with the shit uh, sandwich known as Seed of Chucky. <laughs>